let's continue exploring our C motion guy and uh, I really don't want to throw everything towards you at once because I really think that would be counterproductive. So let's go step by step a bit uh, slightly more complex examples as we proceed. So for this lesson I will create a simple character. So let's go with the biped. We are familiar with it because it is a human preset, relatively speaking. So let's create a pelvis. Let's create a spine. Let's say regular FK spine and uh, now we'll hold the control key and create both legs at the same time. Now let's leave this character to be without any mesh because uh, it would be much easier to explain things in this form. Now let's hit this animate tab and hit this magical add walk button. So what will happen now? We will receive our C motion automatically and inside that C motion we will get a few things already done for us. So these parameters are set automatically by the template we add walk from. So this is contained inside the template. Let's see what that add walk button did for us. So we will hit play and uh, there you go. We have a character walking. Simple as that. It's really that simple. Now you maybe want to change the stride length, for example 50. So we have a little bit more space here, maybe even 75. So it appears a little bit more natural. Of course, if the walking is too slow or too fast, you can change this parameter. So maybe 20 and as a result, the character will walk faster. On the other hand, if we put this to maybe, let's say 40, it will walk slower. So now some concepts here inside will be much clearer. So let me just stop this, go back. And I want to show you that uh, if you hit the J key on your keyboard and uh, hold it down, you can actually scrap the time once you're in the viewport. So that is really handy. This function is called time warp, and uh, I use it quite a lot when working with uh, animation. So you can concentrate on a certain area and fine tune as necessary. So I'm pretty sure you will find it useful. Now let me show you some principles on this uh, real life example here in this action window. And uh, before that, let me just deselect and lock this attribute manager here. So it's not distracting us from this uh, window here where we will actually work with all these uh, parameters. What we have here is quite simple. We have both legs with lift action apply and the pelvis, which is a local hub. And it has uh, those legs as a parent, just as you would expect in a regular body, so to speak. So for example, under legs, we have different face settings, which creates these uh, opposite positions of the legs. So if I set zero on both guys, they will be in sync. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me just undo that for a moment and uh, let's take a look at these lift actions. Now, since this is a really simple walk, we basically have slight upward motion by this value on both like so. Let's put 10 here, so we can just emphasize that a little bit and let's hit play to see the effect. So now the legs are moving upwards, they're rising by this value. We can really go high, maybe 20, and create really a big difference in the motion. So I think you are pretty much uh, following this by now. So the concept is really simple. There are no keyframes, there is no manual setting except creating a spline through which all motion will derive. Let's uh, put this back to somewhere around three. It doesn't have to be perfect. So it's all a matter of taste and finding the right values which uh, really work for you. Let's go back. What is really important and uh, you shouldn't forget is the fact that this uh, child object, these targets, will inherit and obey the movement of their respective hub. In this case, this 
pair of these guys. So let's demonstrate that. Let's, uh, for example, here to this uh, lift action apply to this pelvis let's uh, maybe change this to let's go into negative direction so we will go down so minus 10 and uh, our character will be sort of uh, jumping around and uh, acting a little bit uh, funny so that is the really important concept for you to understand so maybe if i want my character to jump i'll have to synchronize both feet so they are in the same phase so let's put a zero so we have our character happily jumping which is uh, a little bit of odd jumping but uh, but it will give us an opportunity to explain how we can fix that inside this spline graph editor and uh, actually we now reach the most difficult part of the training because i really cannot teach you what i'm about to say and uh, that concerns the feeling for the motion so you have to be able to deconstruct human motion in this case into components so while a human is walking in one cycle so in one cycle of stepping this kind of motion doesn't happen i really hope you're falling so as you can see it goes really up and down up and down two times where it should instead go once let me clarify this by resetting this spline so i'm right clicking and i will reset this spline this lift action and uh, let's just lower it for now so now we have no up and down motion and we basically lost the feeling of this character moving so this is what i cannot teach you i cannot help you in that department you have to use your artistic sense now what i do know and uh, what you can observe in human motion is that uh, it all comes down to the laws of physics and uh, therefore the nature of the motion so here logically speaking you would expect let's say from in this position for this part of the body to lift off so let me just uh, show you what i mean so in the center of the movement our pelvis should be going upwards i really hope that makes sense so let me add a point here and uh, we will actually have to do an inverse thingy here because we have minus 10 so currently in this position so the legs are going up and uh, let's say roughly here our pelvis should go upwards it should reach maximum value here so let's say the point here and simply drag this down somewhere around here so let me now show you what i mean so if i scrub this slowly the character jumps off it extends the legs and slowly comes down yeah, i hope that makes sense so if i press play i will have basic jumping motion okay it's really sort of funny now because of this interpolation but we can change that and understanding the motion of uh, anything in the real world and also being able to deconstruct that motion is absolutely essential for you to succeed in producing uh, believable animation so Let's uh, actually select all these points here by hitting Ctrl A and uh, let's right click here so you can see the parameter I'm choosing from this uh, drop down menu. So let's choose point types. Uh, let's go with easy. So we have nice and fluid motion. Let's try this by hitting play. So we have some sort of uh, more realism to it. I really hope you understand and uh, that you are successfully falling so by this easing we have appearance of weight into our character so let's go maybe with uh, 15 so you're basically searching for the right numbers okay i hope that uh, makes sense let me stop this go back i really want to mention that this spline editor this function graph is fantastic tool it's really powerful so for example these dashed lines here let me just show you those are 
minimum and maximum line so we can pretty much limit on either side regardless of the number of points so this will be the maximum value for this uh, minimum line i really hope that uh, didn't confuse anyone so basically those are limitators okay i hope that makes sense and of course there is a multitude of uh, commands here under this right click menu now even though this looks really interesting it gains a completely new dimension if you change this walk from static to one of these line or path guys let's choose a line for starters and uh, this is what will happen and our character will happily jump and it will jump by this amount set here so if you set this to higher value it will simply jump longer distance so it will cover more distance with a single jump you can really go overboard with this so we have a really powerful athlete jump and uh, let's actually be conservative and put let's say 100 here this time as already told it will influence the speed of uh, complete action happening okay so the direction we can choose the direction of this guy now here is a simple interesting feature which is called gradient and it can be a little bit misunderstood so let me actually tune this down to 75 and uh, now this doesn't mean it will go in linear fashion downward or upward it will actually appear as uh, though it is climbing on the stairs so i think this will make more sense if i change some values here so let's uh, just briefly go from the beginning so here under legs i'll create a default phase variation so minus 25 i'll go 25 here so let's take a look now so actually it is jumping high because of this value we can go minus one or zero so it's sort of going upwards via steps i hope that makes sense so that's what this gradient guy is for okay, let's zero it out i'm pretty sure you can feel how much power lies in this uh, system so now you could actually create maybe a path for this guy to move so let's go to a top view like this and uh, i will shift this direction back to zero so we have a nice and clean value so let's draw a simple cubic spline so maybe something like this so i'm creating a path on which this character will walk on okay so let's go back to perspective view and uh, maybe i will delete this point we don't want this path to be too long because i want this uh, character to stay in the visible area of the viewport so let's choose path here and the settings will change a little bit we will lose some options naturally because now we will follow a path so drop that path inside and immediately character will orient itself on the beginning of the path okay so if you for example want the character to start on this end you have to invert the point order on this spline so you can do that by right clicking and hitting this reverse sequence but uh, actually i want it now to walk from here to this end so now when our guy is on the spline so let's check this out and it's actually walking and following that spline We'll give it some more time maybe 150 like this so it will walk longer and uh, notice here that it really doesn't walk as you would expect so that's where this pose tab comes in okay so it's uh, not really following that path correctly you see the legs are oriented differently now you may think that this follow option has uh, the great impact on it and it actually has but the biggest issue here is let me just stop this go back and uh, i will have to unlock this to access 
spline parameters and this is just one minor thing you should be aware of and that is if intermediate points are set to adaptive this kind of behavior can happen so let's actually press j here and uh, walk here so here is the issue now if you change this to uniform the character will orient itself properly now i'm not sure if this is a bug or not but uh, the solution is to keep your splines in uniform or natural mode okay i hope that makes sense so now let's hit play you can see that guy is really following this uh, spline correctly let's in fact give it uh, more time maybe 200 stretch this so it's really walking on that path which is really cool and uh, shows you the possibilities of this fantastic emotion system now let's have some fun with these options under power step so if i hit play and uncheck this guy it will actually not orient itself according to the path so here you can choose the option to follow and how the hubs will be aligned towards the path spline this bank option and uh, i will explain this a little bit uh, later so here under axis option we have quite a few interesting things so let me first try to explain and visualize what this axis system means here under this pose tab. Here you can define which axis is forward for your character. So for example, currently our hub, so this guy, is oriented in minus Z. Okay, let's uh, try to visualize that. Currently our character will be oriented this way and the vertical orientation will be y plus so this way okay i hope that makes sense so let's uh, change this let's change maybe this to z plus okay so now as a result our character will simply walk backwards so this is really neat and uh, offers a lot of possibilities so now it's uh, maybe a good idea for us to show what this vertical means so if i change this maybe to x then our character will simply be oriented differently if i enable banking you see it has a different impact on this so this is kind of a hard to explain so let's put this to y and uh, maybe i will even select a spline point here because you can actually do that you can change the path so let's turn off bank currently our character is walking backwards which we can change so let's make it walk uh, in a regular fashion like this as it reaches this point it doesn't really bank but as soon as you enable this it will bank according to the spline values i hope that makes sense and uh, it's a little bit uh, abstract but uh, i think you can understand at least the basics of this uh, system and this is just the beginning so maybe i will simply zero this out but i have to delete this uh, little guy so in the world mode and uh, let's put this to zero so it's once again back on the ground now what if we want our character to perform a sidewalk so then you will have to choose the appropriate axis so in this case that would be the x and it will immediately orient itself let's go actually to minus and um, watch what happens it really does walk from side to side but uh, we have overlapping fits now here under object tab under these actions for every single hub you can change some value so let me show you this uh, by going for example here in this stage so we are looking for overlap so here we have overlapping motion and we can use this hub options for every single leg to change the position a little bit so i will just offset slightly for example here in this uh, 
key moment I want to offset this a left leg so let's actually offset it by maybe something like this and let's see if that works and uh, maybe we will lower this to minus 10 and uh, we will also offset on the right leg so 10 here and uh, we will see if our leg motion will overlap we will go maybe a little bit more so let's maybe try 13 or so on each side like this so it's basically searching for right value now you can offset things vertically also you can offset things horizontally so something like this so a lot of freedom there so how about that this is really really cool it's important to understand that every single of these tabs contains a multitude of parameters which you can set so for example here under this pose tab you can offset the base of your object so for example if i do something like this i will actually put my object into crouching position so let's make it walk uh, in the regular manner so forward like this uh, and uh, you can even go like this so it's actually walking uh, oddly at this moment but uh, i'm just trying to show you what each parameter does on most simplest example i can think of okay so let's stop this go back and uh, here under object you will get rid of this uh, position offsets because we don't need them anymore let's hit play and we have our character happily walking let's stop this go back now just before we finish this lesson i want to show you just one more thing because uh, i'm pretty sure you can appreciate the fact that this is really complex and i really wanted to divide all this into few lessons rather than having one giant lesson which will probably confuse you and uh, would certainly be very cumbersome to watch so here under these target options because uh, these legs are currently the targets you can choose the placement of this guy so let me just zoom in a bit so i can show you what i mean currently they are positioned just as uh, in our initial pose which we gained after we hit that uh, fancy add walk button and uh, here you can actually change that this option this placement option really determines how the target will be placed so they can be placed in posed or maybe in line so you see they are now in line both of these guys they are sharing the same uh, common direction okay i hope that makes sense or here you have a spaced option which is basically the same as line but you can choose the spacing between uh, those targets this is the simplest explanation i could uh, come up with and uh, i hope uh, makes sense and uh, this is really an odd looking walk so let's actually get this back to pose now we will take a little break and uh, i'm sure you will appreciate it and uh, we will continue exploring this c motion in our next lesson